I, I have the budget that typically is focused towards detention operations, uh, patrol operations, and court security operations. Uh, and so we, the, 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 being a part of the, of the uh, uh, Ship Channel Security District is a new component to my operations. Uh, of which the staffing model for that is not incorporated in the current budget uh, in the current budget and so that's why it makes the cops grant even much more critical mm -hmm. do you and the congressman feel like the report you said is uh, the same concerns you have well let me let me just say that uh, obviously uh, the proof is in the pudding in, in terms of uh, we're grateful and thankful that nothing has occurred yet i think there there's that speaks for itself number 1 but you don't want to have any evidence to the contrary to indicate that more needs to be done. This is one of the areas where, in my opinion, uh, we have to continuously make sure that our technology and our operations are uh, you know, operating at 100% uh, so that we never have to speak to anything that has ever occurred there other than arresting people uh, and deterring uh, and averting any uh, any intended uh, uh, international and domestic terrorism. So that's the goal. That's the goal. We don't want to have a disaster to say it was we we either were doing it half well or you know or not. Uh, we want to make sure that that nothing that we have a boring uh, ship channel uh, for the history of this community. <laughs> I think there's there's a lot it's some a lot of semantics on spillover violence. One thing you look at is these crime statistics do not factor in kidnappings, extortions, the thing that the drug cartels do best. That's not even factored into these reports. So you know, when you talk to Ziggy Gonzalez down in Zapata County, he testified before my committee, he'll paint a very different picture of what's happening on the ground rather than what we're hearing out of Washington, I think as Sheriff Painter mentioned. Uh, the crime stats are low in, in El Paso. They have a military base there, they have EPIC, they have a, a fence uh, between Juarez and El Paso, but there's no question there's a spillover effect, and there has been spillover crime throughout the state uh, that many sheriffs will tell you about and, and many farmers and ranchers will tell you about and what we want to avoid and I think this is where the sheriff and I very much agree on is when you got 40,000 people killed in Mexico 6,000 in Juarez just right across the border we want to make sure that never happens in the United States and the presence of the drug cartels in the United States uh, raises great concern that at some point they're gonna they're gonna be rival gangs, rival drug cartels, and we're gonna see a lot of violence start to, starting to spike. That's the that's, that's a scenario we're, we're trying to avoid. There's been a, a long, well-established trend, downward trend, of violent crime. Is going to be another close to around the election. Why? Why at this time? We're asking for more. It seems like homicides are down. Why the crime is Let me let me go back to the previous question, and let me just say that. The cartel's uh, goal is not to make it to McAllen and make it to Laredo or make it to El Paso. Their goal is to get to uh, to the areas where there is the greatest uh, demand and the greatest economic opportunity, and those are the major urban areas across the country. Uh, the we are we continue to make significant drug arrests. Uh, we continue to find uh, that our local thugs uh, in our community are becoming much more involved in significant operations. They're having much more sophisticated weaponry. Uh, we're finding intelligence where they are uh, working with uh, uh, at, at a level that you would uh, you could uh, you could say that there's good coordination with the cartels. Those things are uh, are the is the spillover. We do have kidnappings that occur. We do have homicides that occur. There is uh, a level of spillover. It's not to the extent that, thank God, that we are seeing in, in Mexico, but th that's the goal, is to never, uh, ever allow it to occur to that point. That's why we must support the, bo the border sheriffs so that the rest of the inland uh, border, if you will, Harris County is a border, 
uh, is part of the border community. Chicago is part of the border community, but we must make sure that our border sheriffs continue to get the support that they need uh, so that uh, the cartels can have less and less success in terms of uh, making further inroads uh, to our true homeland. Uh, now to your other point, look, uh, we can, we, you know, as law enforcement officials, you can't say, well, crime's uh, uh, down, so that should equal a 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent reduction in personnel. We can't allow that. Uh, we, as law enforcement leaders, stay awake at night uh, worried about are we doing everything we possibly can to keep our community safe. So when we have personnel reductions, we want to fight to keep those, uh, those personnel within our ranks. And so it is imperative that uh, when you know that our uh, constant fear is the fear of terror, uh, that there are people today uh, contemplating an attack somewhere in our community. Uh, and when you have that, you cannot uh, say that uh, you know crime in general is down, so we're okay. We have to maintain a vigilance against terror, and that is where Congressman McCall is providing leadership. He is constantly making us uh, aware and alert that terror is our greatest threat, and that is something that is unmeasurable at this particular point, all knowing that it exists, but we have to make sure we have the personnel ready and available to respond and that is what uh, uh, enables sh uh, sheriffs and me to constantly go back and say we've got reductions in our ranks we don't want to have reductions in our ranks we need support we have these threats we need to make sure that we have the programs in place uh, to support uh, the resistance against those threats we have to wrap this up Bill Fisher make some brief remarks in Spanish and then we've got to go thank you can I uh, I know <clears throat> Alan wants to say something on the uh, ship channel, um, you know, we know it's been reported that documents from Bin Laden's compound indicate that he was looking at hitting the energy sector, and so that that's why I think the funding, as the sheriff mentioned, this is under his jurisdiction, and protecting the port is vitally important because it does provide the nation's energy supply. Uh, we talked about the idea, you know, Congressman Quayer and I got a new UAV for the state of Texas. So that gives us three operational UAVs down on the, on the border. But ideas that, like the sheriff has with, uh, with drone helicopters, very uh, cost effective, not, not terribly expensive, but that would provide the kind of surveillance at the port that uh, would, would be really make a difference for his ability to carry his job out. I mean, I think that uh, that's the UASI funding, Urban Area Secu Security Initiative. I think they've done a pretty good job hardening up the uh, port and ship channel. Um, in any any area where the federal government spends money, you're going to find some some problems. Uh, but I, I do believe that um, that it's gone a long ways to protecting Harris County. Great.